Secretary of Defense Mark Esper signed an order freezing all U.S. troop movement overseas. It's just one of many drastic actions the government is taking to reduce the spread of COVID-19. The freeze expected to affect some 90,000 troops, including those scheduled to return home and those scheduled to deploy. We're continuing to train um, mission essential uh, personnel. Uh, but really what we're trying to do is we're trying to balance protecting the force uh, so we can protect the nation. Let's bring in Lieutenant Colonel Dakota Wood, a retired member of the U.S. Marine Corps and a senior research fellow for defense programs at the Heritage Foundation. And Colonel Wood, thank you for joining us. We very much appreciate it. Why the 60-day freeze, sir? Well, they're looking at the potential, you know, as people moving around, so we know what the incubation period for the virus is, but you really need stability in the system. So when they're thinking through uh, permanent change of station moves, uh, troops that might be moving back and forth for exercises or training, this two-month window balanced against the global trends we're seeing on movement to populations and infection of people, it seems to bracket that. And so I think it's, it's, a, it's a policy call made by the secretary and everybody kind of knows what to plan for. Yeah, and I want to play this sound, but if I can, sir, from the U.S. Army Surgeon General and the Army's top officer, and maybe you can fill in the rest of the blanks for us afterwards. Watch this. If we don't, the numbers will continue to increase. I can only speak to the trend itself. It's increasing. In order for us to stop that trend, we got to limit the exposure. And that's an individual responsibility of every citizen as well as the soldiers. I think we need to do more to limit exposure, especially for those who are not doing mission essential um, tests. So I mean, that's, that's, that's what we're really saying right now is, you know, is when we look at our commands, we say, do you, do you really have to do this task that may increase the risk to our soldiers? Are we talking about exposure abroad, exposure within the military? What, what exactly is the specification there? Well, it's a whole spectrum we're talking about. I mean, if you've got 5,000 uh, sailors aboard a U.S. Navy uh, aircraft carrier or several hundred aboard some other type of warship, it's a contained population, so you could be affecting each other. If you're working with a former military, let's say it's, a, it's an exercise going on in South Korea, you could be interacting with local population. So it's all of that. It's within the military itself and how the military interacts with populations outside it. And they're really focused on the fighting strength of the U.S. military to act as a deterrent to opportunism by major competitors. And if you actually had to go to war, do you have a healthy force to be able to do that? So that's what's really what's driving the concerns here and these extreme measures. Yeah, Colonel, you mentioned the fighting strength of the military. You know, you always hear the military. Is it prepared to fight a war on two fronts? And, and in your estimation right now, are we still there? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, the force uh, has fairly low numbers of people who have been uh, infected by that. Uh, the, the posture is the same today as it was a month or two months or six months ago. So uh, we haven't degraded in any way the fighting capacity or readiness of the force. They want to prevent that from happening. So this is an extreme preventive measure to make sure that the military can continue to do what we expect it to do. I'm not sure the the analogy here is is proper, but you know with, with the Olympics were were delayed, sir, because the athletes didn't have time to train. I mean, the athletes just didn't have the ability to train, and they wouldn't have been up to 100 percent. And the question is, are the military members are they able to train? Are they able? Are they ready? Is this still a fluid situation, or do you think if tomorrow something happened, we are at our peak? Well, peak degrades over time. So uh, the longer you go without doing something, the, the kind of the memory, you know, the, the uh, muscle memory, the skill sets start to decline. And that's not measured in days or weeks. It's going to be several months when that happens. But it's been an aggressive training schedule, working with partners. You know, the knowledge that exists in the force remains there for quite some time. So this 60 days is meant to account for prevailing conditions, maintain readiness at levels that it's already at, try to prevent it from degrading uh, over that uh, period of several months. Yeah, you kind of take it a step further, Colonel. You say, look, the, the whole idea is you need smart leaders, and smart leaders will get you through it. Meaning what by that, sir? 
Uh, so aware of your surroundings, aware of the health of your force, are people practicing social distancing, it's a term of art these days, in, in every way that they possibly can so that you do preserve the, 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 the force. So the military on general relative to the population is young, it's physically fit, it's healthy, and they want, they're trying to keep it that way. So if you're a senior leader uh, or a unit commander, you're trying to make sure that you're preserving the goodness of the force as it is and not doing so silly things. So they're trying to, again, get that balance, maintain competency in the force without mm -hmm. hazard force, uh, unless you're actually putting it in harm's way in combat. What about the status of military operations around the globe right now? Where do we stand there? Well, it's actually kind of fortuitous. You know, we're drawing down a bit and what we've been doing uh, operationally there in Afghanistan. Syria has been kind of a holding pattern for a while. So the, the situation as it exists and U.S. military personnel conducting ops it, is pretty much unchanged. You know, we're doing things, obviously, with special operations in Africa and other places. But it seems to be just a fortuitous set of circumstances mm -hmm. in terms of operational commitment. I mean, if this were some years ago and you had high uh, operational tempo in Iraq and Afghanistan, we might be talking a different condition right at the moment, but there's not really a lot of cause for concern today. You say no cause for concern. It's 60 days. Okay, everybody's fine. If for some reason that gets pushed back and it's 90 days or 120 days, then a bit of cause for concern or still no worries? Yeah, again, I think if you're looking more than two or three months down the road, uh, you know, you do have to have people to get to the range. Artillery crews need to work their guns. Uh, ships do need to sail. They're trying to preserve the health of, let's say, Navy crews by uh, limiting port visits uh, to no less than two weeks, right? So uh, you go someplace, you leave port, uh, you got to maintain the health of the force. So beyond two months, we should start to really question the, um, uh, the efficacy of these forces and getting them back out to the ranges. Lieutenant Colonel Dakota Wood. Colonel, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Great pleasure. Thanks, Chris.